I want to apologize for not giving you any warning about Wade Boer being here this morning. I didn't know he was going to be here till I looked back two minutes before service and saw him. And I didn't know he was going to wanted to speak until one minute before service started. So uh, we were going to have him come and, and share with us down the road, but I didn't know it was going to be this morning. But uh, we did thoroughly enjoy having him here, and he Amen. said he was only going to speak 10 minutes, too, but he a little <laughs> longer than that. But it was all worth it. Amen. So if you, if you missed it, some folks said they would have liked some friends to have heard what he had to say. Well, it, we taped it. It's on our YouTube channel, on our Facebook page. I think Waylon said uh, between the Facebook page and the YouTube channel, 850 people had already viewed it this afternoon. So, Amen. so that's, yes. uh, that's wonderful. All right, we'll get right into our scripture reading for this evening. We're going to be reading from the book of Proverbs and then from the Gospel of Matthew. In Proverbs chapter 25, first of all. And then from Matthew chapter 5, the Sermon on the Mount. Stand if you're able to do so, out of respect to the Word of God. Proverbs 25, we'll begin reading at verse 21. If thine enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat. And if he be thirsty... Give him water to drink. For thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head, and the Lord shall reward thee. Then from the fifth chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, beginning at verse 43, the words of Jesus. Ye have heard that it hath been said... Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. <coughs> for he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good. And sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if you salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Bow our heads. Thank you, Lord, for the word of God. We pray that you will speak to us through it and be with us in the communion service shortly. And for that, we will thank you. Amen. You may be seated. During the American Civil War, President Abraham Lincoln spoke at an official White House reception, saying that the Confederates should be viewed not as enemies to be exterminated, but as fellow human beings with mistaken views about slavery. One woman who attended the reception was outraged at Lincoln's plea that the Confederates be forgiven. She confronted Lincoln and demanded to know how he could possibly speak kindly of his enemies instead of demanding their destruction. Why, madam, Lincoln said, do I not destroy my enemies? When I make them my friends? Amen. I wonder why he was such a wise man, wise president. Yep, amen. That was Lincoln's philosophy to seek reconciliation instead of revenge and compassion. 
instead of condemnation, I think he must have read the book. Mm -hmm. As a lawyer in Illinois, he did something that few lawyers would do today. He encouraged prospective clients not to go to court, but to reach an out-of-court compromise instead. Wouldn't that be refreshing to see today? But lawyers wouldn't get rich that way, would they? If we operated like that. He once gave a lecture to a group of lawyers saying, discourage litigation. Persuade your neighbors to compromise whenever you can. Point out to them how the nominal winner is often a real loser in fees, expenses, and waste of time. Still quoting him, he said, as a peacemaker, the lawyer has a superior opportunity of being a good man. There will still be business enough. End quote. I can't imagine Lincoln being invited to speak to too many gatherings of lawyers today if that was going to be his message. I don't think it would go over very good. One time, a man came to Lincoln eager for revenge against someone who owed him money. The man owed him $2.50, but he had no way to pay him. Now, $2.50, that would be nothing today, but $2.50 was a lot more money back then than what it is today. Lincoln tried to persuade the man to drop the matter and forgive the debt, reminding the man that his legal fee would be $10. Imagine. Did he really want to spend $10 to get $2.50? Apparently he did, because he wanted revenge. So Lincoln collected $10 from him as his retainer. Then he went to the man who owed the money and he gave that fellow $5 of the $10. He then paid the guy, he owed the $2.50 and pocketed the other $2.50. The guy he owed was happy to get his money and never found out that he was repaid with his own money. <laughs> Even though he incurred a net loss of $7.50, he felt like he'd gotten his revenge, and amazingly, he was satisfied with the outcome. That's the kind of stupid stuff we do when we're more interested in getting revenge than in forgiving. The hunger for revenge can drive people to very foolish extremes. In 19th century England, a woman went to her preacher for counseling. Her husband had been treating her badly. She was ended at the end of her rope with this guy. She asked her pastor what she should do. Her pastor suggested what Solomon had said in our scripture reading, that she should heap burning coals on his head by treating him with kindness. Problem was that the woman was not familiar with the biblical metaphor that we read there in Proverbs. So when her pastor asked her later if she had taken his advice and he burning coals on his head, she said, No, I didn't. She said, I thought about putting fire on his head, but I decided instead to use boiling water. <laughs> Yikes. 
obviously she didn't get it that the burning coals God wants you to heap on your enemy are acts of kindness, not acts of revenge or actual hot coals or boiling water. The world looks at things this way. If you hurt me, I'll get even with you. And I'll pay you back. Maybe even with something worse than what you did to me. But I have read Jesus more than once, folks. And I have not yet been able to find that in Jesus' teaching. That is not what Jesus taught us to do. He told us instead we were to pray for our enemy. Said we were to love them. To bless them that curse us. To actually do good to those that hate us. Even Solomon told us in the Old Testament where an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth reigned that feeding and giving drink to our enemy was the most effective way of getting revenge on an enemy. Even when an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth was the standard. It was God's way of heaping coals of fire upon his head. Now enemies don't quite know how to respond when you do that though. If you've ever tried, you want to get a shocked look on somebody's face, just do something like that to an enemy. Now you might not think this, especially when they're hurting you, but having enemies can be valuable to our spiritual well-being. Critics, False accusers, they can hurt us deeply when they're making their accusations against us. But they can keep us spiritually strong as we learn to lean on the Lord to deal with their false accusations and, and their attacks. When our enemies attack us, it can also cause us to go to our knees more in prayer than what we normally do. Not just to deal with our wounded feelings, but to actually pray for our enemies as Jesus told us to do. Do you know why I'm a holiness preacher and not something else? I'm a holiness preacher because I've discovered holiness works. Now please don't get me wrong, I am not trying to brag by saying this, but I don't hate anybody that I know of. Amen. If I do, I'm unaware of it and God's going to have to go home and show me tonight that, oh yes you do, you lied in the pulpit. I don't think I li I'm lying in the pulpit. As far as I know, I don't hate anybody. Now, I've had some pretty rotten things done to me by some pretty rotten people over the course of my life that if I wanted to, I could very easily convince myself that I have a good reason to hate them if I wanted to. But as far as I can tell, I'm not holding against a grudge against any of those people at this point in my life. I hope I see them in heaven someday. With the folk I'm talking about, something's going to have to change in their life though because I'm not going to see them there the way they acted unless they change. Uh, now, why do I do that? Why, how can I not hold a grudge? Is it because I'm some super spiritual guy that I'm more spiritual than you guys are or something like that? 
No, it's because holiness works. Amen. Amen. Oh, I've got some folk that I just as soon not spend an evening with. I've got some folk that I just as soon not even run into. <laughs> I've got some folk that I would never, ever trust. But I don't wish anything bad on any of them. Amen. Not a one. We can do that because of the Holy Spirit helping us to do it. We can do what Jesus is saying to do here, not through our own strength and because we're such good people. We can do it through His strength, with His help, through His power. Now, if we forgive our enemies, and I've had people say, I don't want to forgive my enemies because or if we don't seek revenge against them, does that mean that they'll get away with what they've done? Mm -mm. I've had people say, I, I don't want to forgive them. I don't want them to get away with what they've done. Well, remember God has said in Romans 12, 19, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, yep. but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Amen. Those who have persecuted us, given us a rough time, you fill in the blanks whatever they've done to you. They will get what's coming to them if they don't repent and seek God's forgiveness. Oh yeah, they'll get it. For you see, God does not overlook injustice. He will not let evildoers off scot-free. just won't happen. He will not let false accusers get away with their crimes against us. But if He forgives them, why should we let that bother us? Hasn't He forgiven us a whole bunch of stuff? Mm -hmm. That somebody maybe ought to feel pretty bad about the way we acted toward them or something that we did? When the Lord returns, all those who have mistreated God's people in any way will get what's coming to them. So don't you worry about anything. We will be vindicated. So don't let false accusations or evil deeds against you. Don't ever let it get the best of you. God knows. And He won't forget anything that didn't get placed under the shed blood of His Son, Jesus. So if you have an enemy tonight which I feel pretty sure most of you have more than one, the Lord would want you to ask yourself before you take communion tonight, how are you doing at destroying them by love and kindness? And by sharing the good news of Jesus Christ with them. Now, believe me, I've already been there. I know it's not easy to act the way God would want us to act toward an enemy. I already told you, I've had plenty of them in my life. I've had some terrible things done to me and Linda. Uh, well, so have you. But you can act toward your enemies the way Jesus would want you to act. <clears throat> You'll just keep relying on Him to strengthen you. To help you with your attitude. To help you to forgive. Remember, you don't forgive. Jesus Himself said, He won't forgive you. 
I mean, that's a requirement to be forgiven yourself. You've got to forgive others the things that they, they have done to you. He can keep us from sinning against our enemy and from acting the way that we shouldn't. He can help us to act the way the Word of God says here tonight that we should act. We need to remember what Watchman Nee said. He can only keep those who have handed themselves over to Him. You can only live that way. You can only act that way. God can only keep you that way if you've handed yourself over to Him. So, if you're having trouble dealing with an enemy of any kind or any sort this evening, the question to ask yourself is, have you handed yourself over to Him? If you have, you'll be able to act the way you need to act. You'll be able to take the, the attitude that you need to take. Now, what I told you, that doesn't mean that you don't uh, see your enemy coming and say, oh brother. That doesn't mean you want to sit down and spend the night with them or anything like that. But it means that you can deal with them. You can even shake their hand if need be. You can even look at them and say something friendly to them even. Now, as hard as it is for me to get those last couple phrases out, you know how hard that is for you to do that too. When you come face to face with an enemy. It's not easy. But what I'm saying is holiness works. Holiness can help you to act the way you need to act. To talk the way you need to talk. To not hold a grudge against anybody. You know there are people that still hold grudges against people from 50 years ago. Something somebody's done. 50 years ago. They still, they still bring it up and, and oh, wow. When you forgive, you forget too, don't you? I know it's hard to forget sometimes, but God can help us. God can help us. How many of you believe that? Do you believe you can act the way that this says you need to act? You don't have to raise your hand. You don't have to say yes or no. But ask yourself, is what he's talking about tonight possible? Can that really happen to me? If it hasn't happened to you, what Watchman Nee said is true. He can only keep those who have handed themselves over to him. So the obvious question is, have you handed yourself over to him? Bow your heads for just a moment. As those that are going to Help us with communion. Come at this time and take their places. I would ask you to search your heart. To let God search your heart. Oh God, this is tough preaching tonight. This is down where the rubber meets the road. This is what it means to really be a Christian. Help us, Lord, so that we are able, not in a bragging way, but so that we are able to say, yeah, I can do that through the Lord's help. And He will help us. And if any of us have tried to come to the communion table this evening, Lord, with aught against anyone, 
Help us right now in our own hearts to forgive that person. And if we can't do that, help them to stay away from the communion table tonight until they are able to do that. For Lord, if we can't do that, we have no reason coming tonight gathering around the Lord's table. Because to be one of yours, we have to act this way. You said if we won't forgive others, you won't forgive us. So help us, Lord, so that there wouldn't be anything between any one in any of our hearts this evening. May the blood make us clean. May our conscience be clear. And may we be able to say, thank God, Holiness works for me as well. And for that we will thank and praise you. For we ask it in the matchless name of Jesus our Savior. Amen. As you know, when we partake of communion, we invite anyone. You do not have to belong to the Church of the Nazarene. You do not have to belong to our own church. The only requirement to partake of communion is that you know that things are right with you and God. If they're not, I would encourage you to just remain in your seats while the rest of you partake of communion. Nobody will look funny at you or anything like that. But all who will, I would encourage you to come up at this time and either kneel at the altar if you're able or sit in the first or third fuse, so there is room for the ushers to get between and serve you the communion. So come at this time, if you wish to partake of communion. forgiven, but so that you would be able to act the way that we're talking about this evening. So that you would be able to forgive your enemies, forgive those who've done wrong against you, who hasn't had someone do wrong against them. I mean, we've all been there. You probably could tell me right now horror stories. How somebody treated you at school. How somebody treated you at work. How somebody in the family has acted toward you. How they've treated you. And on and on it goes. Doesn't matter how bad of a horror story it is. You need to forgive those folks. You need to get those things behind you. You need to give those things to the Lord. Put them under the blood of Jesus. What Jesus did on the cross enables us to do just that. Take and eat it and be thankful that Christ shed His body that you might be able to live the way you should. Thank you. 
juice to you. Nothing magical about the grape juice. Just plain old grape juice. But it's what it represents that is magical. It represents the shed blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on the cross for you. It actually is the only reason that you can be forgiven yourself tonight. No matter what you have done to anyone, if it's been placed under the blood of Jesus, it will never be brought up again by the Lord. It will never be thrown in your face. It will never, ever be remembered again. It will be forever forgiven. Doesn't matter if people are forgiving you for it or not. People might not do the same as the Lord. But it will be forgiven. You and I ought to be very, very grateful that Jesus died on the cross for us. Because it's only because of this shed blood that so many churches are trying to <coughs> downplay. Only because of this shed blood that we can be free this evening. We can have forgiveness this evening. That we can act the way we need to act this evening. Take and drink it and be thankful that Christ shed His blood for you. And that it covers all sin. Your sin. Every sin. No matter how wicked you have been, if it's forgiven, praise God, it's forgiven. I say to you this evening, can you think of a more comforting thought? We all were sinners. Every single one of us did enough stuff to be ashamed of that if we got what we deserved, none of us would go to heaven. <coughs> there would be no hope for any of us. But thank God we don't get what we deserve if we come to Jesus. Thank God He is forgiving. Thank God His precious blood covers from all our sin. And that should be the only thing that we rejoice over this evening should never brag about how good we are or how good we've been. The Bible says our righteousness has been like filthy rags. I mean, nothing whatsoever to compare to. As you drank it, be thankful as you go from this place tonight that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses you from all your sins. Now may the peace of God which passes all human understanding may it keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus as we go from this place and may it enable us down where we live this week as we rub shoulders with enemies, as we rub shoulders with people who don't like us, who will do things to us on purpose, despitefully use us, maybe even persecute us. Help us, Lord, to react as you would want us to react, as you yourself reacted. You showed us the way, and we praise you for that. Now just go with us from this place, and we will thank you for it. For it's in the name of Christ we ask all this tonight. Amen. You are dismissed. Take someone's hand beside you. And tell them you'll love them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <laughs> 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 <laughs>